Welcome to How Preschool Teachers Do It. This is Allison Kentos. I am an early childhood educator. And this is Cindy Tarabush. I am an early childhood consultant. This podcast is for parents and early childhood professionals. Let our experience and research-based knowledge become your guide. Welcome back, preschool peeps. Hi, peeps. I might like that better than Happy Monday, by the way. Welcome okay. back. Welcome, welcome Maybe back. I have to come up with a good what? welcome. You know what? Not everybody listens to us on Monday, but you know what else, Pete? That's very true. If you have a suggestion on how we should greet you, tell us because we'll just use it. What an awesome idea. Remember when we used to have contests before COVID happened? Yeah. <laughs> we so had yeah, a contest that, yeah. to decide who, what you wanted to be called and we figured that out and that's why you guys are called Peeps. So maybe right. that's what we do. Right. Even if we have like a, a few responses, then every week could be a different one. We test them out. Okay, yeah. So let's do that because I definitely would love to have a really cool greeting for everybody. Yeah, because I always just say hi, peeps. Like I don't know what else to say. I don't know what to say. <laughs> I, I don't know what to say. I don't know. Um, or if you really like that, we just say it that way. Then tell us that too. So then we won't get so. Uh, also, you know, I was interacting. <laughs> I was interacting with someone on Zoom who told me that they're a fan of my podcast, and I said, "Well, I'm so glad you're one of our preschool peeps." And that person got such a big kick about hearing me say it directly to them. I have to tell you, Allison, it was so cute. Um, <laughs> well, it puts them in like this this like special club. Like it's a group. It, it, we, like, are a it, we are. We are a special. We are club. A very special club. Yeah. And in today's gathering of this very special club. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to talk about whether there should be a lot of talk about children becoming like their parents in their profession or their hobbies or, you know, yeah. growing. Shouldn't children be just allowed to grow into their own footsteps is today's episode. But it was really a situation that Allison has encountered that inspired this episode. So go ahead, Allison, let everybody okay. know about it. All right. So at my school, there is a former NFL player. He's actually, which is pretty, super cool, by the which way. Is I'm super cool. I know, <laughs> I know, because I'm a huge football fan, so I totally fangirled all over this. But <laughs> he's quite famous, and he still is. Um, and he's got several children that went through our district. They are still there, and most people will come up to him and say, "Oh, aren't you glad that your son is old enough now to join the town team?" And he's like, "No, that's not who he is. That's not what he wants to do." He gets kind of like annoyed a little bit that they that people just assume that his three children are going to just grow up to be him and he's like that was my path that might not be their path and I thought that was just so inspiring because I think a lot of people a lot of children when they have a famous father or mother famous for anything I mean it could be actors actresses athletes doctors you know you know they just assume that that's the path you need to take because your dad or mom did that and that's not the case you need to grow into your own you know you're right so, though people assume it you have yeah and it doesn't have to be like you said it doesn't have to be just sports you have you know yeah. two parents who are doctors and everybody's like mm -hmm. oh is she going to be a doctor why yeah. do we assume that the children's interests even are the same as right. what the, the parents' interests are. And I don't uh, quite understand that. Like, as an adult, like, neither one of my parents were teachers or even anywhere interested in that. You know, my brother is an electrician. Neither of my parents were electricians. So why do you think that your child needs to be that? And yet, I think there are some parents who are maybe putting pressure on their kids to do that you will become a doctor. That's it. You know, kind well, of thing. Sure. You will become a lawyer. That's it. And it's like, no, you need to give them some choices here. Like they might, but even, have... even before they become something, it could be, I went to this university and now I want you to go to this. University. I want you to. Yes. That's a hundred percent true. Or I, I knew a parent once who wanted her to me, I don't know, wanted her children to do all the activities that she did in high school because her high school experience is great because she did marching band and soccer and whatever else she was in. I don't even remember anymore, but I'm like, but that doesn't mean it's going to be good for your child. Like you enjoyed that. And that was wonderful that you enjoyed it. And that made your high school experience happy, but that doesn't mean that's, what's going to make your child's high school experience happy. So it, it, 
I mean, and I know you want your child to have a really happy experience, but I feel like they will have a happy experience if you give them the choices of what they get to do. You know, the happy experience comes from becoming yourself. Yes. Whatever that is. Yeah. Yeah. One of my experiences as a parent who now has grown children is that eventually it actually is really healthy to give up what we dream for our children when we hold them as newborn babies. You have a newborn baby, you hold this baby, you dream about what the future could be, but actually the future needs to be attached to whoever these children are. And they're not me, you know, they're different from me. In some ways they're very much like me. And in other ways, my children are very different from me and they each needed to forge their own path. Yeah. And that's part of the job of parenting. Part of the job of raising children is to be able to say, I'm going to give you a foundation, a foundation of values and understandings and knowledge and experiences. And then you take that foundation Mm -hmm. and run with it and become what makes you happy. I, I can understand a parent like you have encountered a parent where there could be potential physical danger or is very physically demanding saying, no, I don't want to, I did that, but I don't want to put my kids through that. And right. in fact, I want them to do something very different and I'm not going to encourage it. I can understand yeah. that. Yeah. Haven't there been things that we've all gone through in our lives where we feel like I would never encourage my children to do this? Yeah. Oh no, I have a couple of those. I won't say them here, but like, I have yeah. a couple of those of like, if I ever have a child, you will not do this because my experience with it was awful, you know, like, and I don't want them to go through that. But then I also feel like, is that fair? You know what I mean? Because my experience was awful, but will theirs, you know, I don't know. I think you have to think like this. I think you have to think my experience was awful, but other people have had good experiences. So if you're interested in doing this, we'll give it a try. I think you have to think like that for some things, for like recreational activities or or even, you know, if there was a selection of schools or whatever. But, right. but I think that there are other things that we've been through that we would discourage things that may have caused us, I don't know, some kind of physical harm or financial yeah. hardship or, you yeah. know, where we would say, I really discourage that. But I have to tell you that even if you discourage it, there's a difference between discouraging something and forbidding it. Suppose right. that guy, you know, one of his children gets a little older and says, no, I really do want to play football. This is what yeah. I want. This is what I want. Yeah, I would, I would hope that he would be open to that. You know, I mean, I would hope so because, and I I would hope that his child would feel confident enough to go up to him and be like, listen, dad, I know you don't want us to, but, but I really want to, I really want to, you know, know I'm interested in it, you know, and there are people in the entertainment business who talk about that, who had no intention of allowing their children to act or direct or be in the public eye in any way. And their children grew up and said, no, I I really want to do it because in some ways it becomes like the family business. It's all the only thing they know really is like the Hollywood lifestyle. And so they go, no, I really want to do that. Mm -hmm. And unlike Allison, so I I grew up and I'm an educator and I come from a family of educators. Yeah, see? Unlike Allison. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And I think I may have mentioned this in, in a much earlier episode of this podcast, maybe. But I'm going to give a shout out to my uncle. He... Oh, uncle. Allison knows my <laughs> I, uncle. I love, he holds a special place in my heart. <laughs> he I love that man. He's the greatest. He's the greatest so man. <laughs> he, I'll have to tell him to listen to this episode. Yeah. He uh, was a, a teacher and then an assistant principal in New York. And when I was little and he was a young, newer teacher, He used to bring me home things like grade books they didn't need, attendance things they didn't need. (laughs) He would bring me home things. And I used to use these real things to play school. That's cool. But he would have never looked at me and said, you must be a teacher. Right. Right. He He, was also a principal and he didn't say you must be a principal. He was an assistant principal. He never. Yeah. Even when you got into education. He was an assistant. Yeah. And he never an assistant principal to like uh, overseeing a department. And he never said to me, you must be in administration. He, yeah. he would encourage my dramatic play as a kid for sure, yeah. but he knew it was yeah. because I loved it. I used to right. play school with one of, I'm going back to the Bronx now, with one of my cousins who lived in our building and yeah. she, had the, she had the chalkboard and I was really jealous of that, but I had the materials. <laughs> I had the chalkboard in my basement. <laughs> I, I had the I materials had that. from my uncle. So yeah. it's one thing, 
to give children the chance to interact with things, dramatic play with things, experiment with things. It's another thing to say, this is what I absolutely do want you to do. Children need to grow into their own footsteps. Yeah. They need to figure out who they are and what gives them joy and what motivates them. And it may not be what you wish, folks. Yeah. I, well, I, I try to think of like, like these athletes or like Olympians, for instance, right? And say like you are a very famous Olympian that won a lot of gold and then you have a baby and they're like, oh, look, it's the next, whatever. Like, I don't even feel like you should say that. Like Michael, no. I, I don't know if this happened to Michael Phelps, but I'm just saying like, when Michael Phelps had children, I'm sure there were people that are like, oh, look, it's the next swimmer. It's the next Olympian. It's like, that kid's like wee little and you're already saying what his destiny should be. And I feel like you shouldn't do that. That's their, you know, I mean, it's, it you hear it all the me. time, like all the time, it, that's the next one. And it's like, no, it's not. It's still <laughs> labeling. It strikes me that it's labeling. Label people it. talk yeah. about not wanting to have their children labeled. And people talk about professionally making sure not to label children as this sort of person or that right. sort of person. And that labeling is usually talked about in regard to behavior and negativity, yeah. right? Yeah. We don't want children labeled as the hitter, the biter. We want to say this yeah. is a child who does this because we don't want them labeled with that notion. We right. t parents talk about not wanting their children labeled as um, special education or in need of special education, which really, if your child needs special education help, please go get it go get because it. it's yeah. so helpful to them in their oh, lives. Yeah. This is another yeah. kind of grow into your footsteps. This is who you are. We're going to give you every chance yeah. to, to, to learn ways that help you with your developmental delay or whatever your speech delay or your, your speech impairment right. or your disability. We're going to give you every chance you do that through the special education services. And we're always trying to convince families it doesn't label them. It helps them. The, these are two different things because yeah. for too many generations, kids were labeled, labeled. as the weird yeah. <laughs> kid, the, yeah. the kid who wasn't smart, the kid who started trouble, the kid who we labeled yep. for way too long. So now we have this giant fear of labels, except when it comes to this. Right. <laughs> right. Like suddenly it's accepted because it's this. It's like. But it shouldn't be ever accepted that you're labeling this child as the next Olympian, the next gold medalist, the next NFL star, the next actor, the next doctor, the next lawyer, the next whatever. Like, how much pressure is that for that kid? Seriously. Right? I mean, because then you're growing up you're, and your destiny is already set out for you. Okay, I'm just going to be a doctor. And that's not what you want to do. You want to be a teacher, but you can't say that because you've been labeled the next doctor for God knows how long now. So like it's labels, too much pressure. labels can be good, positive words and labels yeah. can be negative words, but they're still labels. They're still when labels. We, when we yeah. do label children, we call them the hitter, the biter, the next Olympian. Mm -hmm. We're telling them who the world wants them to be. Right. That's then, not okay. That's they so have to grow pressure. up to be themselves. Right. It's so much pressure to stay within that box of what you're labeled them. Yes. Right? They try I mean, to and, too. Uh, and they, they try to because they me. think if, because they also think if they don't fit that box, because so many people have said, Oh, you're going to be the next NFL star or whatever it is that you have failed and you didn't, you're just living your life. That's it. You are just you. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Yeah. It's not fair. You're setting them up to fail before they're even there like before they're even born sometimes, like, you know what I mean? And that's not, that's not right. It's not fair to those kids. It's really not. But I think we have a very human tendency to categorize things. That's how our brains oh, work. Sure. We yep. have to categorize things. We have to name things, label things, categorize things. So what I'm going to ask you to do if you're a professional is name, label, and categorize the toys on your shelf, but not the children. Yeah. Your classroom yeah. materials, label it all you want, but not the children. Yeah. If you are in a family and you have young children in your lives, you know what? You can categorize name and label the stuff in your closet, but not those children, no, not the children. It's yeah. not healthy for their growth and emotional health as they get older to feel as if the world has already decided 
who they need to be by the time they're two, three, and four years old. The world yeah. doesn't get to decide that. Only yeah. individual people get to decide that. And those people who've been sort of pigeonholed and forced into professions because their family decided that, they're usually pretty unhappy. They end up changing careers a lot. Yeah. They get to a point in their life where they have some sort of crisis, mental crisis, and they can't mm-hmm. continue on because yeah. they realize this was put this, on me like yeah. some sort of costume, but it's not who I am. It's not who I am. And I want to be me, you right. know, but when you go through that, I think it takes you even longer to discover who you are because you're just on this pathway and you just keep going. And then all all of a sudden you're in this career that you don't want. And you have this like moment of like, well, what am I going to do now? This is I'm miserable. I'm unhappy. Yeah. And I think you have a mental break, you know, but yeah. then you had having that mental break might help you discover what you want to do or not, but like maybe starting all over at a very older age is very difficult too, you know, but if you were just able to have followed your dreams from the time you were a child, you wouldn't be put in that situation. Maybe, maybe you would, but maybe not, you know, I don't know. Like, I'm just not sure why we assume the child of, of two lawyers or a lawyer or a doctor or whatever is going to grow up to be that. What if that child really loves mechanics, right? Really is good at figuring out how things work and how they go together and loves mechanics and would love to spend a whole life tinkering in some way with mechanics you know what we need those people too in our society well I think there's also this part of parents like that might not have anything to do with what your parents do but then they worry that you're going to struggle financially if you follow this career path you need to have a professional career so that you make a good salary when really your heart is in auto mechanics or dancing. I think auto art. mechanics make decent money, don't they? I, I don't Okay, I take that back. But plumbers art, too, they make good money. I think some of the people anything that money. doesn't Blue require college apparently. <laughs> or okay, say you're really into art. My my brother was a very, very, very good artist when we were growing up, but he I think was kind of steered away from that because they were like there's no money in that. You know what I mean? You're going to be a okay. starving artist. And I'm kind of going to submit. But your son false. is an artist, right? My son and is he an does. Artist. Yeah. Yeah. And my son. So, so for a living, my son is a graphic artist. And yeah. then he, he also like paints on the side, but he earns a living as a graphic artist. Yeah. But see, like for my brother, he didn't follow that. Cause I think, I don't even know who put that. My mom wanted him to go to art school, but he, I think someone in someone somewhere, I think told him, Nope. Can't you'll make, make no money. money in that. Can't make a living on that. That's not a living. You need to actually have a job. And it- so you think it's better to say to kids, okay, this is what you love. This is your talent. Let's figure out a way Let's you figure can out a way to use it. Yes. I, I think that, that in, with, with so many good intentions, families are like, I don't want you to struggle and suffer. Right. So no, don't do that. And, you know, I'll admit that there was a point in time when my older son um, wanted to major in theater. And I said, well, what are you going to do with that? How are you going to make a living at that? And it was a concern, but you know what? He went to college and majored in theater. Yeah. And he has a decent job now, right? And he's fine. Yeah, he's He's fine. He's figuring out his path in life. They will figure out their path in life. They will be okay. If we are supportive, there's a difference between being supportive and overly forceful too. Yeah. Yeah. A supportive person provides a little net underneath you and advice. Yeah. Right. Uh, An overly forceful person talks you out of being you. Yeah. And that's, it's, it's really just not okay. It's not okay at all. Right. Because whoever you are, I feel like sometimes there's this, like, there is no right and wrong to whoever you are. That's you and that's who you should be. But I feel like sometimes people label things as like, that's not the right way to be, or that's not, you know, this is, you need to follow society or whatever it is. And it's like, no, whoever you are, whoever that is, is perfect in its own way. You know what people, you're leading your life. If no one's breaking a law or harming anybody, can everybody just let everybody live? Can we just live our lives? Just let everybody live. Everybody stay out of each other. So I just can't. Yeah, I just and can't. I can't. So if you are, <laughs> you know, when you're thinking about this episode, just remember labeling in any form 
sets children up for being unhappy rather than happy. However, special education needs are not a label. They are assistance. So, right. It offers assistance that children need. And unfortunately in prior generations, we didn't have as much experience with all of the extra help in the special education services that are available today. So it scares us, but it doesn't make it a bad thing because it scares us, which is probably A whole other episode about what scares you isn't necessarily terrible for you. Terrible for you. So, yeah, you know, but we could kind of go on and on like that, but we won't. We're just going to say be careful (laughs) not to put your ideas for a child and what they should be or who they will be Mm -hmm. on them. They don't deserve that. They need to grow up again to be in their own footsteps. Yeah. Create their own path. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. So don't forget, if you have thoughts about this or an experience you would like to share, feedback five us by (laughs) by going to our website, howpreschoolteachersdoit.com and sending information in our contact form or sending us a message on Facebook through our Facebook page. Yeah. And you never know, we might pick your feedback five and read it on the podcast for which you have to give us permission and let us know your name and please let us know where you're from. That's you're just from. a bunch of fun when we you're just for fun. <laughs> we learn where our <laughs> listeners are from. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. All right. So now take stock of your self people. Are you putting your ideas for kids on them? Go yeah. take stock and we're yeah. <laughs> catch you next time. Bye, Bye peeps. Bye.